a little of what we looked at last week and again um, giving credit to, 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 to my experience my studies but also to uh, a person who I feel has done some great study this of which I I feel is is right for the church to be brought forward to church in general around the nation and the world even and that's Chris Gore um, some teaching from and insights um, from him and some of our experience in ministry as well. So we looked at and we started um, a sermon series on going deeper, on going deeper with Christ, going deeper with our faith. And um, the, the theme last week was quite a long theme, um, but simple in, in, in what it, it was trying to do. And the theme was for us to be confident in carrying the supernatural atmosphere of heaven. For us to be confident in carrying heaven within us, wherever we go, whatever we're doing. And um, we looked at, we saw that um, the disciples, Jesus was moving the disciples on from seeing is believing to coming to understand that believing is seeing. Believing is seeing. Not seeing is believing. And we looked at the fig tree, um, how Jesus spoke words uh, 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 to the fig tree and, and he had trust and belief that his words would come to pass. And the disciples, um, they couldn't see that because to them, faith was about seeing for believing and Jesus um, gave us a great lesson, it serves a great lesson about trusting that, that, that our words and our prayers will come to pass. And we saw that our prayers actually get to the root of whatever the prayer is. Uh, whether you don't see it there immediately, um, that we're to, to trust that it will come to pass, but the prayers get to the root of what we're praying for and begin to work um, on those roots. Whether those roots are a healing need, whether they are a situation need, a circumstance need, or whether uh, there is some sort of evil um, that, that the prayer needs to get to the root of to change and, and uh, to, to cut off, if you like. And that for you and me, it's to trust that our prayers will come to pass. And for us to carry the atmosphere of heaven, that trust, wherever we are, in our homes, in our relationships, at work, when we are in strife, when the world feels like it's collapsing all around us, we're to carry that atmosphere of heaven and that trust in us. And why? Well, because he wants, Jesus wants to use you. He wants to empower you. He wants to give you the tools. He wants to um, remind you that you are, you are his temple because he is living in you. It's all changed. The temple is you. That is where Jesus resides in your soul, in your spirit. And so that's how precious you are. And remember, that is why um, I suggested if we, if we don't follow him uh, surrendered and wholeheartedly, then do we insult him? You know, um, uh, our bodies are precious. Our persons are precious because he resides in us. Now, um, where he wants to use you, whether that's for a physical healing, a spiritual healing, a, an emotional healing, a circumstance, or, 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 or whatever that is, um, or whether that's um, 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 helping a brother or sister in Christ who's fallen away. He wants to give you the tools to empower you um, to be able to bring some sort of prayer route to that situation, to carry the atmosphere of heaven. And that's all about intimacy. It's not a religion. This is a relationship. It's a relationship. And relationships need intimacy. And our relationship with Jesus calls for us to be intimate with him. And we're intimate with him. It can be in all our lives, parts of our lives, but especially in prayer and worship. That is why we're developing and have been developing the worship to, for it to be intimate. Not religious, but intimate. Because it's a relationship. And that needs intimacy. We need to be able to allow him to love us and for us to love him with intimacy. That's why we allow these spaces um, for, for, for him to minister to us. Because it's not words of religion. 
It's a relationship. And today, uh, we're moving on to, to understand about going deeper in that relationship, in that intimacy with him. And today's theme is impartation and anointing. Impartation and anointing. And um, as we explore it, there's two sides to impartation and anointing. Um, and I want to bring some balance to that. I want to bring some balance and understanding because it is so important to come to understand impartation and anointing because very often it's very misunderstood. It's hugely misunderstood in this day and age. Um, the anointing and impartation, the blessings that that brings is misunderstood. And there tends to be two approaches to impartation and anointing. And one is, is elevating it to an unhealthy position. As if we are going to a man or a woman of God to actually receive their anointing. When in fact we have all received the same Holy Spirit which was upon Jesus Christ. So when we elevate somebody that, that we're going to, uh, a man or a woman, we're going to get their anointing, uh, that's, that's probably just not quite how it is. And the second approach is, um, is often total neglect to this important kingdom principle. Total neglect through ignorance, through teaching, through um, wanting to be safe and lukewarm rather than radical through theological, theological teaching that is not biblical. And so there's an ignorance about impartation and anointing. And within that ignorance, sometimes um, the, the, the um, not wanting to move in that is fear. Respectability. Um, you know, um, can I really surrender? Can I really let God have me? All of me? Or do I need to be respectable? What will it cost to surrender to him? What did it cost the disciples? Look at the Bible. They gave everything. They forgot about, I'm a peer in this community, or what will that person think? They, 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 they just surrendered. So fear about impartation and anointing. What do we have? If we have those two things, we have mediocre. <laughs> we have comfortable religion. We don't have really the full kingdom of God. So um, it, it, uh, neglect or, or fear or ignorance through lack of teaching um, and lack of uh, moving on, lack of courage um, can be an issue around this, this, this topic. So impartation is an important kingdom principle um, that the enemy, if you like, the devil, if you like, the enemy tries to undermine. Why? Why does he try to undermine it? Well, because impartation, the anointing of the fruits of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit, uh, the Holy Spirit empowers you and me for kingdom work. And he's not bothered if a church family is lukewarm. Why, why should he bother? He's not bothered if they're not getting teaching about it. No bother. But he is bothered when the Holy Spirit is welcome. Because he's concerned then. Because we can become empowered with the fruits of God. The fruits of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit. The fruits of, of love. Not our love. Not human love. You know, we fail in human love. Not, not, not human kindness. There's a selfish kindness. You know, kindness can be so selfish. It's really all about you. But the fruit of the Spirit of God's love, of his kindness, of his gentleness, of his forbearance, you know, of his toughness to stay the course, the biblical course, the faithful course, not to go off the road. His patience. We fail in our patience. His self-control. It's a supernatural, if you like, downloading into your soul and spirit. Because God's there and it's more. It's more. So the devil gets worried. Okay, and he will, he will um, try and undermine impartation and anointing. So let's explore a, a little bit about impartation with an open mind. With an open mind, with, with a heart yielded and surrendered 
to the scriptures, to the Holy Spirit, to Father God, to Jesus, to them. Let's have an open mind to them. Let's have a hunger to receive and to be released to receive everything God has for us. So what is impartation? Well, here are some truths about anointing and impartation. You see, we receive the anointing when we are born again. Now that doesn't matter if it's taking you a whole lifetime of just gradually coming to a point, I believe, or whether it's an overnight road to Damascus experience, or whether whatever way you came to faith. But the impartation, when you came to recognize that Jesus is God, the Son of God, then you're born again, and you receive an anointing. And you receive an impartation in Acts 2, 38. And Peter said to them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. We receive the anointing from God himself. And in uh, 1 John, you already have an anointing from the Holy One. And we receive the same Holy Spirit who was upon and within Jesus. The same one. Um, Romans 8. But if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. You're the temple. The anointing and impartation. We as believers already have the original flame of Pentecost burning on our heads. You already have it. We have it. So impartation does not light the flame of the Holy Spirit in our lives. It puts petrol on an already burning fire that each one of us carries. You've already got the fire. Impartation, anointing, pours the petrol on that fire. And impartation begins when we are willing to surrender, to lose our respectability, to, to expose ourselves to the gifts of God being demonstrated through a through uh, coming to get uh, an, uh, an impartation or anointing from whoever that is. And it's not about the individual. It's really not. Um, but it is about some people have a confidence. And they have a confidence to risk God using his spirit to flow through everybody. So we are drawn to people. Think of Billy Graham. You know, think of him. He knew it wasn't him, but he had the confidence to speak it and do it and share it and anoint. God anoints. So sometimes there are individuals who have this confidence. And I know myself, when I see these people, I want to get prayer from them. Not from them, but just through their confidence. And I know God's using them. So impartation recognizes and honors the gifts of God upon all of us. An impartation anointing is an invaluable tool for those who want to walk in a greater dimension of what they have already see, received. You know when we want more? I want more. I want more. You know that desire to have more? Well then there's, there's an opportunity then to, to receive more. To re we're on a pilgrimage of maturity in the Christian faith. And if you have a desire to receive more, then we'll step out and we take risks. So we must again recognize that we have already received the Holy Spirit. Christ is in you. He's in me. And we should also understand that the same Holy Spirit who lives inside of, of, of anybody, people with confidence or with gifts, are honoring um, and manifesting through everybody, even this healing team over here. So this is the thing. 
Okay, we're not trying to get a better version. We're not trying to get a better version or more powerful, uh, more powerful, uh, 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 a more powerful spirit. Instead, we are intentionally, and we should be intentional in our faith, we are intentionally um, being vulnerable and exposing ourselves to a situation, whether that's people, whether that's uh, an opportunity for, for prayer. We're willing to be vulnerable to expose ourselves um, to receiving certain gifts, the fruits of the Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, stirring these gifts up within us to become um, confident for Jesus to use us. And in Colossians 1, to them God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of the glory. Do you see how you know, our bodies are so precious? Our persons are so precious? Let's not insult him. We're temples carrying the Spirit of God. So stewardship and transference of the anointing, of what we've already have, but stewarding that. So too many believers are looking to get more when in fact they have failed to appropriately steward what they already have. You have it. What do I mean? Does? Well, God entrusts us uh, with more when we have demonstrated responsibility with what we currently have. I want to talk now about obedience. You know, when you've been in those deserts, when, when you haven't even had any faith, but you just go on, you turn up, you're being obedient, where are you, God? Or you're in a situation when the whole world's crushing in on you, and it's horrible and it's dark. But you go on and you're obedient. In those moments, God doesn't put them on you, but he uses them. Because you've been obedient, he gives you more when you've come through. Because he can trust you. You know, we, we can be overwhelmed with the love of God and the presence of God in us. And it's in those times where we, where we strengthen our character. It's in those times where we strengthen our obedience. And when we come through, he anoints you with more. More of his love, more of his gifts, more of his fruits. Because he entrusts you with it. He can give you more. He can give you more. And we need to recognize that impartation anointing doesn't have to be experience-based. You know, people do experience the presence of the Holy Spirit. That's good. But you don't have to. It's just trusting that you've received. So when uh, we're prayed for, some will have an experience of the presence of God, and some won't. doesn't matter. Some um, will feel they've, they've not received anything. No physical sign. You just have to trust. In some ways, he trusts you more that he doesn't have to give you anything. When I came to faith, I was experiencing God every moment of my life. And then gradually I wasn't. Because I was maturing. I was maturing in faith. I didn't need the, I, didn't, I, I began to not need the, the, the presence all the time. Oh, I love the presence. I began to be able to walk in obedience. I began to mature in my faith. You know, so, so experience is great, and I experience God. Now I do, but I realize that, 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 that God didn't have to give me milk all the time. You know, that I could actually walk in faith. So you don't have to experience. You just have to trust. And if you do experience, then that's great. But an important point is that as we receive more, we need to be more givers. We need to be given. We, we need to move away from um, being in the pews just to receive. 
We're all ministers. We need to move in to be givers, givers of this, not just to receive. We're all ministers. We, and we cannot go from service to service and person to person pursuing anointing um, yet failing to do anything with what we have already received. That's so consumerist. We receive to give. I want to receive so I can extend his kingdom. And his kingdom is in the next person that I speak to and they come to believe in Jesus. That's why I want to receive. I want to receive so that, so that I can speak his words. So to increase in what we have received, it is vital that we learn how to give it away. We're all practitioners in the kingdom of God. Not just the people up here. We all have to learn how to minister. and That's why we did the prayer ministry course. Just to get a few more people practicing and doing, giving it away. And in Luke 6, Give and it will be given to you. Good measure. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. So the idea is the more you give, the more God gives you. The more you love, the more he loves you. The more grace, the more truth. And truth's the hard one, isn't it? To speak truth into someone's life. That's the hard one. So we need grace and godly courage to do that. So if we don't believe that we have the hope of glory living in us, then how will we ever give him away when we are not in a position of having someone to pray impartation or anointing prayers over us. If we're not willing to be that vulnerable, how can we ask others to be vulnerable? And we pray for them. So some examples, don't worry, I'm coming in to land in a few moments. Some other examples of impartation. Okay. Um, the laying on of hands, it, children are involved with this, youth, our youth work, ministry, um, young people. And then people brought little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them and pray for them. But the disciples, because they're pretty religious, yeah? They were pretty religious, but the disciples rebuked them. Uh, uh, and Jesus said, let, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. Do we hinder our young people? Oh, shh, the back. New person, don't, not churched. Don't know how we behave. <laughs> do we hinder them? Got an opportunity to, to do some cakes and stuff. Do we, are, we, are we consumers? Is it just about us as adults? Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. And when he had placed his hands on them, he went on from there. Matthew 19. Impartation for healing through the laying on of hands. Mark 16. They will lay hands on the sick and make them well. And laying on of hands uh, for the commissioning of, of different ministries, you know, ordination or prayer ministry teams or elders or whatever it is um, um, in Acts 13. Now in the church of Antioch there were prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon called Niger, Lucius and Syrian, Manian, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. While they were worshipping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work for which I have called them. So after they had fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and sent them off. Acts 13. So the anointing is transferred um, from person from person uh, because you're the body of Christ. You're his body. We are his body here on earth now. You know? So impartation, um, again, can come through prophetic utterance and laying on on hands uh, for the, to receive the spiritual gifts and healing and the fruits of the Spirit and everything from heaven. And in 1 Timothy, do not neglect the spiritual gift within you. 
It's a calling. Do not neglect the spiritual gift within you, that special endowment, which was intentionally bestowed on you by the Holy Spirit through prophetic utterance when the elders laid their hands on you. 1 Timothy. So impartation of spiritual gifts. Uh, Romans 1. For I long to see you, that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift, to the end you may be established. So Paul has confidence to say to God, come here, come here, let me lay your hands on you. God, bless, anoint this person. God, use me. Bless this person who's hungry for you. And so Paul was hungry to, to go and meet them so that he could um, impart um, God's blessings upon them. Fruits of the Spirit and all many other things. So some of them, again, to remind us, God's love, not ours. His kindness, not our selfish kindness. His gentleness. His forbearance. His patience. His self-control. The ability to see as he does. Circumstances. Spiritual discernment. Visions. Verses. Thoughts that we know are from God. Pictures. Words. Audible words. Dreams. Outpourings. Outpourings. Why? To bless and equip the church for the kingdom of God. To transform and change you and me. To change us into being disciples of Jesus. Not social workers. This is supernatural. This is holy. To change and transform us. So that we change and transform uh, the community, the world around us. For kingdom of God um, principles. Impartation and anointing. Amen.